Hi everybody, today's going to be a requested video. I was asked to show how I used watercolour in Colouring Heaven without wrecking the paper and I was thinking, well I haven't actually tested watercolours on the new Colouring Heaven paper because most of the ones you've already seen in my book collections and things like that, they've been ones that I've done on the old paper which was very slightly thicker. So I thought yeah I'll test it in one of the new magazines and before I start I thought I'd show you my actual watercolours. And this is actually my backup set, the one that I haven't really used, but my, the set that I do use is exactly the same as this one, except the box. The box is a different colour. But these are WH Smith's watercolours, and if they still sell these, I'll try and put them in the link below. But I'm not sure they sell them in these wooden, these kind of wooden boxes. I don't think they sell them in those anymore. I think they're just in a cardboard box now. I think just the paints themselves are in a cardboard box now, but I thought I'd show you the colours that I usually use. Um, we've got lemon yellow, medium yellow, deep yellow, vermilion, brilliant red, rose madder, which is sort of a pink colour, violet, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, light green, sap green, viridian green, olive green, yellow ochre, red ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber and Payne's grey. Okay, so those are all the colours that I will be using. I've put a little bit of each one onto my palette so that I can use it without having the box open and in the way. So here we go. Here's a, these are all the colours just kind of swatched out onto my palette so that I can use them as I go along. Um, I probably won't be able to tell you which colour I'm actually using at each time because I can't remember all the names, but I'll try and leave that there so you can see what I'm actually doing. And this is the page that I started working on this morning just to test out how the watercolours did work on this new paper and to, fairly well to be honest the paper has wrinkled but you're pretty much always going to get that unless you're using actual watercolour paper and this one is from Colouring Heaven Little Cutie Special which is one of the fairly recent ones it's not the actual newest but it's one of the fairly recent ones and I went for this lady here uh, she doesn't fit in with my monthly theme of crystals and gems because all the ones I found and picked out to go with that theme they're in older issues and I wanted to test the newer paper so I've picked this lady to start with and the main reason I picked her is because she was giving me kind of Christine Karen sort of vibes and you may notice with all those paints that I've just showed you that I'm going to be using there is no flesh tone skin tone in there and we all know that Christine Karen tends to use the bright colours like unnatural kind of skin tones like these and I thought it might fit fit in quite well with this lady and give me a chance to be a bit more um have a bit more fun be a bit more playful experimental with it and this is how far I came this morning and the paper is coping fairly well to be honest with you there's a couple of areas where it started pilling and pilling is where the paper starts kind of getting torn up and little kind of dots keep coming through um and you can see it in your painting and these areas are where I really did try to use as much water as I possibly could so this is kind of deliberately too wet and that's why the paint is um, kind of a little bit spotty and the paper starting to peel there but apart from that it seemed to work quite well so I'll go ahead and I'll start showing you how I was doing this I'll I figured for a tutorial I'd maybe work on a face and uh, show you a couple of techniques there how I was using it and uh, yeah if if the tablet holds out, I'm not sure it will, but if it holds out, I will do the rest of it and kind of have it as a speed paint, speed colour or some sort of time lapse. But if not, it will just be a tutorial of me working on her face. And I figure either way, either way, I can get a video out for you guys to show you how I've been doing this. So here we go. OK, so I'll start with her face. I'll start by just working on her cheeks a little bit with the rose madder. That's the pinky kind of colour, which was this one. And I'm not making the paint too watery. I'm just kind of dissolving enough to get a good brush full and I'm not really going totally mad with my water and I'll just start with doing her cheeks here trying to leave my usual kind of highlight along the edge of the jawline kind of like that and how I did it on her shoulders I kind of blended it out with a little bit of the lemon yellow you have to excuse my reaching across, I'm used to having my palette on this side of the page. But yeah, I kind of tried to blend that into the lemon yellow a little bit. It's 
So you can work a little bit with damp colours next to each other. You can work a little bit like that without them going really crazy and pilling the paper. But if you put too many wet layers on top of each other, I've found that that's when this, this newish paper starts to get a little bit angry with you, <laughs> a little bit grumpy with you for doing that. Um, all right, we're going into the light green now. Just not exactly trying to copy Christine Karen, just using that kind of that kind of colour palette, that kind of way she colours faces with these really bright unnatural colours. You can blend blend out your edges a little bit, just that was a very little bit too much water actually. Again, as, as with when you do the super tips, if you put too much water on, you can blot it off. There go, and I'll take this green down around the chin, try and give a bit of a, a bit of an indication of a chin there. We don't want it to be super, super obvious. And a little bit white there on her chin, on her cheek rather. I don't want to work too much into that while it's still damp, otherwise the paper will start getting a bit funny. So I'll move over to the other side of her nose. Coming down there with my shadow and I've decided that my light would be coming my usual way from the top right or the side of the right hand side. So this side would be more in the shadow. And basically I haven't really planned this. I just thought I'd get the paints out, have a bit of fun with it and see, see how we go. If it works, it works. But I'm not planning on this one being a super masterpiece or anything. It's basically just to show how I do use the watercolours and Trying to have a bit more bit of fun in the process. <laughs> which is blending with this pink to give a nice orangey colour, which I think quite, works quite well. Gonna bring in that oh, bit of red and green. Bringing in this light green, yellow green. I think this one was called. Blend those edges in so it doesn't look so harsh. Just try not to really scrub into the paper, be very gentle because if you do scrub into the paper, that's going to start the paper getting torn up and filling. Those blend into each other. Make sure these edges are wet here because I'm going to add a little bit of yellow onto a chin. Probably get a bit of yellow coming in down her nose there. If the light's coming from that side. Try and blend into that green now. But again, I don't want to overwork the paper. I don't want to add too much water. I don't want to scrub into the paper too much. I just want to try and get a better kind of blend going on on those colours. Just 
take that light green. Maybe I just have my face there. Taking that into the middle of the forehead with the yellow. Add a little yellow there on your eyelid. Wherever you feel, really. It is like a totally unnatural skin colour, so feel free to just put them wherever you want to. <laughs> That's how I'm doing it. Or you could, if you wanted to, really try and, you know, emulate Christine Karen, you could find one of her pictures and put colours in the same place that she does. But I'm just using her as kind of an inspiration to try and use these unnatural colours because I don't have a flesh tone. Pink along the side of her, her eyebrow, that worked quite well, so I'll do that on the other side. I don't really want to overwork the paper. You'll notice that I have got newspaper down <laughs> behind my book here. That's because I do tend to get a little bit messy when I'm when I'm watercolouring. I end up with drips everywhere. So if there's none on this picture by the time I've finished, then then I'll be considering it a well, that'll be a bonus. Okay, this is the Viridian Green. Get into there while it's still a bit damp. Around the top of her forehead. That's how I did my shadows down here and then over the top of that. Once it had dried, I went over with the purple. To give a more harsher line, this there's basically two main techniques when you're using watercolors. You can either use wet colors either on top of each other or next to each other. Oh, excuse my voice. Either on top of each other or next to each other to give the kind of blurred lines and the nice blending going on. Or you can wait for the first layer to dry and then go on top with with another color. And uh, using the wet colours together, that's called wet on wet or wet in wet. And using the, the colour on top of one that's already dried like this, that would be fairly dry. That's wet on dry. And you can leave it like that. You can leave that, that line there like that, that shadow line if you want. Or you can, you can blend it out a bit with a little bit of water. Just as I said, we're being really careful with our water. This paper does not... Take super kindly to it, it will work okay, but it, it's not made for watercolour obviously, so we're being really, really quite careful with our water. We're adding this dark green underneath her nose there, a little bit of shadow. Dark on that side, but that's where our shadowy side is anyway. on her nose a little bit. Noses can be quite difficult to do. <laughs> Takes a while to get them looking right sometimes I've found, but we'll have a go. Go down this side. 
know this side is starting to dry off now so we can go for again for the wet on dry if you see any little dots starting to come through that probably means that you've added a little bit too much water a few too many wet layers on top of each other so just leave that area for a little while come back to it you probably find that covering the larger areas is more difficult than doing the smaller ones because for larger areas you tend to add more water to kind of spread the paint make it go a bit further and that that's really not what we want to be doing we're being very very careful with our water you can layer main idea of watercolours is layering usually so we can go in with a few layers I'm just dabbing off when I wash my brush in the jar there I'm just dabbing off the excess water with a bit of kitchen paper because you want the brush to be damp we don't want it to be soaking wet we ended up with a little blob of pink there because there was a bit of pink in our green that was a bit bit messy earlier apparently but well don't worry too much about it probably won't see it once I finish shading We have the shadow going behind a headpiece there. a little bit of pink on the edge of her nose I think we're it might work it might not but I'm experimenting There we go, let's just see how that pink works on top of the green to the side there. Should hopefully make a more purpley, darker colour. Again, I've never really painted a face with these colours, so this is uh, very much an experiment, really, for me. I think we're just seeing how this turns out. But again, I'm not expecting this to be any kind of a masterpiece. I 
is starting to pull a bit down there. We can conceal that by shading on top with pencils. I did shade on top of here and here with the black and the white polychromos just because they're on the desk <laughs> or on the table and yeah just thought I'd use those while they were there. I'm just going to do their lips there while we're kind of waiting for her face to dry. I probably pushed it a bit far there with doing all the different layers. Paper is holding up though. But I think I'd better leave it for a little while before I try anything else. It's starting to warn me that that wouldn't be a good idea. Let's take purple maybe. I think this one's called Violet. I'm using the paint fairly thick here. You don't have to use watercolour, it's super thin. But that's what it was designed for, it was designed to be thin with lots of little layers going on. So it was made to be used that way, but you don't have to. And on paper like this, which doesn't take that much water, it probably pays to be a bit more thick with your paints. Which isn't always possible when you're doing big areas. But. The shadows down here on this shoulder I did with the purple after I'd done all the other layers. And then I did shade a little bit on top with the, the pencil, polychromous pencil. I'm going to want to take this that side of it and quite deep shadow. The shadow underneath the headband there with purple. We wasn't it in this side. We're going to take this eye into quite deep shadow, so I'll add some purple on the right side of the nose. Ooh, a nice little area there where we've got a bit of a watercolour blend going on. One of those little blobby effects that I like. So I'll try and leave that showing because I do love those effects. Just try and soften those lines on the cheek there. Going with a bit more pink, I think. Again, leaving that little blended area because I do love those effects. Let's pink on the top of our eyelid. Why not? I can 
quite well for a face. I think I might bring, yeah, I need to work on her nose a little bit, I think. Oh, I'm not thinking that. 